Dexter was on a mission to find Freebo, but unfortunately for him, he was also found by Miguel Prado. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Entertainment. Here to review Dexter, Season 3, Episode 2. Dexter was on a mission. He wanted to find Freebo. He wanted to kill Freebo, but he wasn't the only one. Miguel Prado was also on the prowl. He was also trying to find Freebo. And was he also trying to kill Freebo like Dexter was? Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we'll find out, but when a guy takes a loaded gun into a house, you gotta think murder's on his mind. Buddy. You gotta think murder's on his mind. Plus, his brother who got murdered was also trying to kill Free. Freebo's got a lot of enemies here. He does. Freebo is not a free man. He's not, and that's not the only enemies he's got. The entire... Miami department was trying to find Freebo and this was basically a race against time. Uh, you've got Dexter going up against Batista, La Guerta, Debra, Quinn. They're all trying to find Freebo. So is Dexter, but he's not playing. He's in the same team, but he's not He's not a team player. He's not. He's finding for himself. Well, but we've seen this since the beginning. I mean, Dexter will just sabotage his team in order to throw them off the trail so he can have the trail to himself and I, I guess that's smart I guess if you want to take out serial killers and or, or murderers or bad people then Dexter needs to find them before <laughs> the police do so I get it but um, I mean I was going to say this guy probably shouldn't really be employed but I mean he is a murderer after all so yeah he shouldn't be employed for that reason but no one knows he sabotages them. nobody knows so uh, we start the episode of Dexter finding out that Rita is pregnant uh, he doesn't really seem to have an opinion whether or not to keep this baby. Rita says it's a bad idea. Dexter's like, I agree. But then she says, we're keeping it. And then Dexter's like, oh shit. So I mean, that's a big decision, but he just doesn't really seem like he's bored. He doesn't really want to make this decision. No, he wants to just agree with everything she does to make it easier. Whatever makes his life easier. He just wants to kill Freebo. Aye. So, not, not be a dad. That is pretty much it. At the station, everyone is focused on Miguel Prado's brother, except for Dexter. He's more worried on finding out who the Jane Doe was, who was Freebo's girlfriend, and he wants to try and track down Freebo, and he ends up finding out a location for the ex-girlfriend's house, who Freebo murdered, so he, he assumes that he can find Freebo there, and when he gets an opportunity, that is where he is going to go. Uh, meanwhile, Maria tells Miguel that she wants to be focused on this and that she and her team will handle it and that she's got the best people on this job and that he needs to take a back seat, but Miguel isn't convinced. He's like, can I really trust the same station that shared a department with the Bay Harbor Butcher for years? And uh, this was maybe a low blow here for Miguel Prado. He did apologise. Yeah, it was below the belt. He's, he's lost a point for that one. Although there, there is like just memes alone for um, Miguel Prado apologising in this show. So it's like it seems to be his go-to thing where he just apologises to there people. Memes, right? There is memes, yes. Um, funny memes. I mean, there's like, I don't know, just five minute fits of him just apologising to people. Anyway, um, so he, apolog he apologises and uh, Maria says, look, I needed to take a backseat thing with Oaks and I didn't. Maybe you need to take a back seat here with your brother. Um, we get Quinn and Batista. They find a former acquaintance of uh, Freebo. And he ends up giving information on, on Freebo's potential location. Uh, we have, again, this Asian woman, Japanese woman. I don't know what she is. Um, Yuki. She's trying to get Deborah to basically give up Quinn. Saying that if she does then sh she will make sure she's given her badge. She will get her shield. Seems like a cheap way to get one. I mean, that's not really earning it. Yuki here is basically saying here, if you betray one of your partners, if you throw him under the bus, if you find dirt on him, we'll just hand you out a shield. It's like, is that really the way you'd want to earn a detective shield? Is that how Harry would want you to earn it? I mean, Big Harry's... He was dirty as well, though. We got a bit of that in mind. We don't know the full story about John. Yeah, actually, Big Harry was a bit dirty. Dirty, ha dirty Harry. And dirty Harry. Yeah, so I don't know, but Deborah is convinced that she's not going to do it that way. Yeah, my, my colleagues are like family. I mean, Quinn's only been here for like two weeks, but... Uh, he's family. He's family, I buddy. For the family. Uh, Dexter, like we said, looks up Tegan. 
finds out her address. He then goes to investigate, but he can't do it because Miguel invites him and Rita over for dinner at their house. We see Miguel's house. Miguel's house is really nice. Uh, Rita reveals that she's pregnant. And uh, that's pretty much it. Deborah goes and visits Anton again. Anton is Quinn's CI. But he's given Deborah a lot more information than, than he's given Quinn these days. So he says he'll look around, see if he can get information. Quinn is like a creator wrestler on a WWE game, isn't he? He doesn't. He's just fucking El Generico. Like his look, isn't he? He's got not much to him. El Quinnil. Yes, um, Miguel then talks about him and his brother and that they have their, uh, they basically have their own way of doing things and that Ramon, Miguel's older brother, has acquired a cell phone belonging to Freebo's mother and when Freebo calls his mother they will have basically a direct line to Freebo and they will know his location and I wonder what Ramon and Miguel are planning to do with Freebo, probably the same thing Dexter is. You see, th those sort of things only work if you have them on the line for like 40 seconds. I'm, I'm sure Freebo's hardly a fucking burner. Maybe, you know what I mean? Like, he, he's a junkie. No, like, I mean, if Dexter was... Hold on, like, the guy goes in and munches on cereal in the kitchen, like, I mean, I don't, is he really the smartest? Well, I don't think he is, but I think it's pretty insane that Miguel Prada, this guy who's like district attorney's, his whole plot is hinging on this guy ringing the fucking cell phone. Yeah. Just Dexter and point out, listen here, you dumb spick. <laughs> what the fuck you want? Um, there, there was a bit of a, I mean, there was a bit of a story with someone that Miguel had previously convicted, and it turns out he was innocent. It was, I believe, the guy that Quinn and Angel tracked down to find out more information uh, about Freebo. the information. Uh, Chicky Hines. It turns out he's not guilty of what Miguel sentenced him for. Or Why would Miguel care? Yeah, Ligerta didn't want to tell him. No, but... Ligerta's so bothered about Miguel's like opinion on, oh, Deborah had to get moved off the team, so why the fuck would she even move against this guy? What if Miguel turned around and said that we sit down? Yeah, my brother's dead. I want that solved. I don't give a fuck if I've locked the wrong man up. Yeah, I think this all happened as well because Deborah went and confronted some little pimp who looked about 16. What? Shabby Gaza. Ah, he was about... Pff, he was about four foot nothing. Yeah, so he, he gave up some information. Um, De Batista told Deborah, you know, you're doing quality work and that is how you're going to earn your shield. But Quinn's not happy about Deborah basically wearing out his CI. He he basically tells her back off because Deborah's kinda getting the praise here, but she's following up leads that I'm pretty sure Quinn could have got from Anton. And yeah. it is his CI at the end of the day. Uh, absolutely, but I, I guess you could say that Quinn's on the case of Freebo. He's not on the case of the other Jane Doe. True. So therefore he's he, he, he's not investigating the correct thing. That is true. Dexter then thinks, you know what? I'm gonna be, a, I'm gonna be a father soon. <laughs> I need to deal with this the best way I can. Let's go and find Freebo. So, Dexter sneaks into Tegan's place. Freebo's sitting there getting high. I mean, he's sitting there naked as well, eating cereal. It's just, a, it's a junky high life, isn't it? It's a shit way to be. Yeah, this guy's getting. Yeah. <laughs> Considering that half of Florida's on his ass, you think he would be sitting in his state? ex's fucking house? I mean, the I know. dumb bastard. Probably is the kind of guy that would stay on the line for 30 seconds or more. Anyway, Dexter manages to choke him out and he gets some set up in the outside. It's like a shed kind of thing. He's got all the pictures. He's like, yeah, you're going to pay for your sins. Look at these people that you've killed. And he's got a picture of Miguel, Prado's little brother, on the back. Is this guy really guilty or not? Is this guy innocent? We don't know, but fuck it, he was killed. So it's time for Freebo to die. Uh, Dexter then stabs him with the bayonet that he used to kill Oscar. So Dexter's now killed two people with this bayonet. Fight now. But unfortunately for Dexter, we also have Miguel Prado on the case. He's arrived at Tegan's house and he's making his way out to the garage and Miguel pissing down with rain finds Dexter he's like what the hell are you doing here Dex and he looks down Dexter's covered in blood he's got the bayonet covered in blood Dexter then says hey it was self-defense he, he, I mean he gives some bullshit story here about how he was trying to get a lead on uh, a forensics lead on Freebo Freebo attacked him he had to kill him in self-defense Miguel Prado believes this, or at least pretends to believe it. He, he recognises the weapon. Um, he gives Dexter a big hug. 
gets some blood on his nice little shirt. Uh, he wants to go and see the body. Dexter says, no, no, you can't. You know, we don't want to you to get in trouble for this. Plausible deniability. Yeah, plausible deniability. So he tells him to leave. I'll handle it. Miguel then clutches Dexter and I'm big sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a big heartfelt thank you. And um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Miguel Prado then leaves and Dexter's just standing there thinking, holy fuck, I got away with that one. Because it wouldn't have looked good if Dexter's claiming self-defense and, uh, and Miguel walks in and he sees Febo tied up and he sees these pictures and like... I mean, <laughs> but see, part of me doesn't... I Part of me wants to think this is fantastic, or part of me wants to think this is fucking awful, because I don't understand why Dexter would kill this guy in his backyard. I know it's Tegan's backyard, but I mean, it's a very sloppy, I think. It's an easy place. To it's unlucky, transport. I guess, from the, the, the point of view that Miguel turns up, but it's like, his whole plan hinged on here if Miguel wanted to go through the garage or not. Oh, you can't go in there, buddy. Deniability. Miguel doesn't strike me as the sort of guy that would just back down, but he did. But I've got a feeling that blood on the shirt that they emphasised is going to probably mean Miguel's... But see, Dexter now has the leverage, because as soon as they find that information on Miguel, he could just kill Miguel, and then it'll look like Miguel did it. And then... Could, no. could Dexter be blaming another person here for but the... Then, uh... No, but, the, but at the same time, it's like the same problem Dexter had with keeping Dokes alive. It's like, now Miguel knows he's a killer. Doesn't know how... Self-defence, buddy. Yeah, doesn't know the extent, but... Once, once word gets out from Miguel that Dexter's killed, killed this guy, even though I don't think Miguel's telling anybody, but De can Dexter really... Plausible deniability. Can Dexter really live with the, uh, you know, the possibility of this guy opening his mouth? Well, sorry. that we will find out. Anyway, guys, that's it. That's the end of the episode. It's now time to rank it, rate it, call it what you want. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, I think season 3 is decent. I think it's good. I don't think it's great. I think it's good. It, to me, it's it's not as good as season one, and season two. Yeah, I, I think also I just think this reveal here is very similar to the Dokes reveal in the Everglades. It is, but and I think it's it's that close to each other. It, it doesn't really stick out as much. Almost like it's like three episodes from each other. Really, one thing I would say though is, I mean, with shows, I think season three feels like a new starting point of the show. If that makes sense, I it, does, it feels yeah. like a new era. Whereas I think season one and season two felt very similar. Aye. You had the running Dokes Dexter battle. Uh, you had the Bay Harbor Butcher or the Ice Truck Killer, sorry. And Deborah was still feeling the effects of the Ice Truck Killer into season two. I feel like season, like we talk about like Sons of Anarchy, the way you've got it like splits into two, act one and act two. I think season three definitely feels like a different act compared to the first two seasons. I would agree with that. So, I think it might take time to build up some of the new characters and things like that. But I'm getting at 7, you're getting at a... I'll give it a 7 as well. There you go, guys. I, I think it's one of those ones where I think the end of the episode, it'll be easier to judge it when you see the outcome. When you see the next episode? Aye. Alrighty, guys. There you go. Episode 3 next week. We'll catch you in the next one. Uh, more theories and polls and stuff like that coming. So, make sure you, you check out the channel. And we'll see you in the next one. Till then, peace.